All right. Uh, so, a little introduction about myself. My name is Mark, um, and I've lived here in Japan for, I don't know, three years, I guess. Uh, I'm going on to my fourth year. Uh, and since living here, I've lived in Iwata Prefecture. I've lived in Ibaraki Prefecture. I've lived in Kanagawa. And I've lived, and I live in currently uh, Aichi, Aichi Prefecture. So I started in the northeast, and I'm going more and more west, essentially. Now, as for my experience here, uh, I've taught mostly public schools, and I've taught a little bit of Aikaiwa. So if you know anything about coming here to Japan, you realize that if you're coming here to teach, then you're teaching essentially one or two different positions. You're teaching in public school, or you're teaching in a private sector of teaching called Aikaiwas which is more of kind of like a daily conversation English that you'll be teaching from children all the way upwards to adults. So uh, I've taught mostly, um, I've taught mostly, uh, sorry, public schools. So um, if you're watching this video, then it's very likely that you have been referred to uh, by a friend of mine who uh, teaches ESL. If not, then you just found this video because you're interested in living in Japan and understanding what you'll need to uh, overcome this process. So uh, in this video we'll be doing, we'll be covering I think maybe like four different sections if possible. Uh, first is choosing the right company, second is the interview, third is the things that you'll want to bring, and four is what you can come to expect when you come to Japan. Now choosing the right company. Since you'll be since you're starting out um, and you're trying to get to Japan from whatever country you're coming from, uh, and I'm going to presume uh, maybe Canada, America, or another European country. But anyway, um, so if you're coming from abroad, uh, you won't technically have many choices. So even though I say uh, you'll have to choose the right company, uh, at first, the bas basically the first year is going to be kind of like settle on whoever chooses you kind of a deal um, many of the large companies they'll almost hire anybody despite your qualifications but i will tell you how to increase your chances of getting hired with whatever country or whatever company you you end up trying to work for so what do companies look for when they hire new teachers one they look for adaptability now when i say that i really mean it in that way you need when you come to a foreign country and many people come here uh, many people who come here are coming on the first time they, they they've never really traveled by themselves or uh, are not really used to uh, fending for themselves now when you come to Japan uh, you'll need to you'll 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 encounter many obstacles in your life, uh, particularly the language barrier, and that scares many people. And I, I've actually had friends uh, back in the States who are interested in working, but are like, do I need to learn Japanese first? Blah, 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 blah. Techni technically, you don't. Uh, there are many ways to get by without having to speak Japanese, but it helps you tremendously. It helps you with your social life uh, and just living on your own uh, if you can understand and speak at least a little bit of Japanese. For me, I speak a very advanced level of Japanese, so I don't really encounter these problems. But uh, with that said, uh, yes, so you will want a little bit of Japanese if you want to uh, do very well here. But you know, you can still long learn uh, as you're living here. It's nothing that it's not like uh, if you come here with nothing, then you expect to keep going with nothing. You come here, you learn as you go, and then you just you live your life. Now, uh, so you'll want to be mentally, mentally, you'll want to be mentally prepared when you come to Japan. Uh, so, you know, you, if, you, if, you're, if, you're, if you're coming here, you don't know how to speak the language, you don't know anybody, it's a lot of mental stress for a lot of people. So you'll want to know in your heart that you're going to come here, you're going to commit, and you're going to stay here and live it through. Um, and if you do, uh, I can guarantee you that you'll learn so much, so much more about yourself, and you'll become s like a, a much stronger person in the end. Like it builds so much character to come and live in another country. Um, 
And another thing that they're looking for that they'll really want, and this is going to be a huge plus for you if you have it, is a driver's license. Many teaching, many teaching positions here in Japan, they require you to drive because they are in the rural parts of Japan, which don't have the ready transportation such as trains and buses uh, at frequent times. So uh, you'll definitely want one. Now, if you're American, you'll want to get an international driver's license, which you can get at companies like AAA or AAA rather. Um, and I don't know, if you just Google, if you just Google international driver's license, you will guarantee uh, find one. And they're, they're fairly cheap. I think I got mine for like 50 bucks or something like that. Uh, so all you need to do, all you need to have is, you know, your state license and just go sign up and then that'll be it. Now, that's if you're American. If you're Canadian, etc., like, uh, or European, then all you need to do is have the license on your own and then you will you can come to Japan and be like, hey, I'm Canadian or whatever, give me my license and I'll, they'll just give you a piece of paper to sign and they'll transfer all the details and then you'll have a Japanese license ready for you immediately. If you're American, you'll need to get one of these and these international driver's licenses, they last for exactly one year. So uh, with that being said, you'll want to get this as close to your departure date as possible because they last for one year. And uh, in that time, if you're planning on staying for more than one year here in Japan, then you'll want to get the actual Japanese uh, license, which uh, for us Americans, we have to take the test. Uh, I took the test, it took me two tries. On average, it takes maybe people from four to six different tries uh, to get their licenses because it's very, very strict. And the more times you take it, then the more money that the DMV here gets. So that's just it, you know. Uh, it's just part of the deal and something you have to deal with. Now, when do you take this test? Uh, I suggest you take it in the sixth month uh, of being here. Um, but yeah, uh, just because you'll have you'll you'll have learned the the loops of driving in Japan, and it gives you enough time to, uh, you know, just pass the test and still be you know viable to drive. You know, if you wait until the very last time, you fail the test multiple times, and your license expires, then what can you do? You know, so just give yourself enough time. Now, I've sidetracked it a little bit. So basically, you'll want to have a license for those very reasons. Now. Uh, if you don't have a license, it's going to be very difficult to place you because a lot of the city uh, positions, they require people to have, you know, more often than not, a lot of people who get city positions are either very lucky, if you can call it lucky, I don't really like living in the city, or um, they've been in Japan for a long time, or with that company for a long time, and they got a request, and they were like, I'm going to go to the city, and they're like, okay. So... Uh, more often than not, you can expect to stay in the rural parts of Japan if you are teaching a public school position. So, um, the last thing that you'll need when you come to uh, the interview process is, not really need per se, but it helps you a lot. It really does. And this is the ESL certificate. Um, and by no means am I like advertising for uh, my friend or anything like that, but uh, it really helps you uh, just score a lot of points with the company because, you know, if you were if you were the interviewer per se and you interviewed someone and one person said, yeah, like I took this course, I spent like a hundred hours, uh, you know, like figuring or like learning how to teach uh, foreigners versus someone who has zero experience, who would you pick really? You know, um, so you know if you take the ESL certificate, it really does and it really does help and I've I've used it in all the companies that I've uh, applied for. And uh, one of the main reasons why I got slightly higher pay than others is because I have the certificate. Um, and one reason why I got picked over others is also because I have the certificate. So keep that in mind. Uh, it's very, very, it's actually very vital uh, to passing uh, interviews successfully here in Japan. So at least like having those three things uh, will really put you ahead of a lot of people. And just, you know, just be very outgoing and be very willing to uh, be like, yeah, like uh, you can place me anywhere. Uh, there's, if if it's with a big company, you can be like, yeah, you can place me anywhere. I'll be okay. Uh, I can drive, so you know, and I I I've got teaching experience, quote unquote. Um, and yeah, so uh, that's with that's with the interview. And 
So if you do pass the interview, the things that you will want to bring with you. The things that you want to bring are work clothes, obviously. So you want to bring at the least uh, five different sets of uh, work clothes. Um, and you'll want to bring one of these, a toothbrush. Um, toothbrushes here in Japan. So if you look at this size, I mean, this is a fairly large size, or maybe just like a normal size for an American toothbrush, but uh, many Japanese toothbrushes are probably half the size. So it's kind of a weird transition. If you care for these things, I care for it. So, you know, I I get, uh, I went home uh, recently and I got a bunch of toothbrushes and brought them back with me. Uh, you'll also want to bring uh, deodorant because deodorant is fairly scarce. I'm talking like the powder type, the, the, the sticks. Um, those are those are very very rare here in Japan. A lot of them, a lot of the, uh, a lot of the uh, what do you call it? The <clears throat> the deodorants here are kind of like water based or I don't know alcohol based. Um, so it depends on your taste. But you know if you if you really like antiperspirant, then you want to bring a lot with you, like because antiperspirant is very kind of rare here in Japan. Another thing that you want to bring is obviously. Yeah, just a laptop. Um, it'll help you uh, just connect places and uh, communicate if you'll need to. Um, but uh, in all in all, it really just comes down to common sense. Like, what do you absolutely need to bring with you, and what can you live without? You know, uh, for me, uh, when I came to Japan, I came with work clothes. I came with regular clothes. I came with a laptop, a very heavy one, uh, but I came with a laptop because I'm a gamer. And um, that's kind of an odd thing to say. Uh, the screen behind this camera is actually a three monitor setup. So that's, if I'm saying gamer, then I'm a gamer. Um, laptop uh, was an Alienware, so heavy. Anyway, um, and you'll want, and I brought, I brought, what else did I bring? Like shoes, like nice shoes. Um, and I think that was it. I came with very little, and you'll want to come with very little because, for the most, for the most part, when you're first moving around here, you're carrying everything by yourself. So, uh, with that said, expect to bring a lot more money than they're saying. So, for example, one of the companies that I worked with, they said if you bring a minimum of maybe two thousand dollars with you, then you can get by uh, for the first couple months uh, until your first paycheck first couple months before your first paycheck now keep this in mind and I, I don't know if this is I, I don't know if this is standard but uh, from the work that I found up until now it was fairly it was a kind of a standard thing so uh, here's how it works um, say for example you start at January 1st you would ex and you and your company pays at the end of the month okay on average on on as a rule, okay. So they pay at the end of the month. You start on January first. If you are starting, expect to get paid on February twenty eighth. All right, the very last day of the following month. Uh, the reason for that is like the whole payment system, like the BOE pays the company, and then the company needs time to process it, blah 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 blah, and give it to you. So it's a three way kind of connection uh, to get your pay. So uh, essentially, when you're first arriving here in Japan, you have two months zero pay. And you have to fucking deal with it. Um, and for a lot of people, that's not something they really expect. And for me, I'm a kind of a I'm a big spender. I spend money on things that I probably shouldn't be spending my money on. But um, yeah, so uh, two months safe. And so companies they often say, yeah, if you have two thousand dollars, then you should be okay. I suggest you bring at least three to four thousand dollars with you. If you, because you'll be buying more often than not, you'll be buying uh, the furniture if your uh, apartment is not already semi furnished, and you'll also be, um, you know, just basic basic life. You know, uh, you'll be looking around probably, trying to live the Japanese life uh, for the first couple of months, getting used to it. So you'll be going out drinking if you drink. You'll be going out eating, um, which you do eat. Um, so you know, there's gonna be a lot of a lot of socializing. And just, just kind of budget for that. And, um, you know, they say minimum this, but I say double that. Or at least add 50% to that 
to that uh, amount that they're asking you to bring with you if you want to live comfortably. Um, now, um, so yeah, that's basically what you'll need. And that's kind of like, that kind of like transitions into what to expect when you live here. Um, uh, this, this kind of goes back to choosing the right companies and where you end up, okay? So one thing that you want to be very, very careful of when you come to Japan is um, when you end up, for example, you, you choose a company, a very large company. Oh, I don't know. I don't think I mentioned this, but um, when you're choosing companies, you'll want to be very, very careful of whether or not you receive pay cuts during winter and summer vacations. Um, for in Japan, uh, the the comparatively they're shorter vacations than in the U.S. For example, we have about like one month uh, for summer and one month for winter vacation, um, and in that time, if you're working in a public school, uh, many companies they cut your pay <laughs> because you're not working. So, uh, for example, one previous company that I worked for, they cut my pay. I think like 50% during the summer and 75% during the winter. Um, and that's a lot of money, you know, especially if you're already, if, you're, if your apartments and whatever is already like very expensive, then it really cuts into your lifestyle. So be very, very careful of the companies that you choose when you come here because 50%, yeah, 75% is actually a lot. Um, and unless you save like a like a biatch, um, then you're gonna struggle uh, when those when those times come. Um, so yeah, so what to expect? Expect that. That is a big one. Um, the current company that I'm with, we don't have pay cuts, um, but uh, we're a smaller company. I find that smaller companies here in Japan are they take better care of their their employees than the larger companies, obviously, and. Um, you know they cut less corners basically so uh, if for example you come to Japan through a large company that hires uh, new teachers every year like every season um, there's a reason there's a a reason for their high turnover and B uh, you'll want to leave the company immediately as soon as you can really um, just because after that first year you'll have enough experience uh, to be like hey uh, I've taught you know uh, I can do this, I can do this, I can do this, hire me, basically. And plus, if you have the ESL certificate, they'll really like that. So uh, it's something to get kind of like just plan for. You come to Japan, you spend a one year or whatever uh, with that one school or with that one company. And in maybe January, or December, start looking for the new job because you can get paid more. You can avoid the whole pay cuts crap and uh, you can avoid like weird uh, expenses that are just kind of like piled on top of uh, living with uh, or s working for a large company. By that I mean, uh, for example, you live in the city through a large company. Uh, rent is gonna be huge. It's gonna be so freaking big, and live the cost like, the cost of living is just gonna be massive, and that will put you in a black hole. So basically. When you move out, there's a lot of costs that you'll have to cover, a lot of fees, and uh, more than more than likely, if you don't know how to save well, then you will not be able to get out of the apartment, which means that you'll stay with that company for all eternity. <laughs> uh, I don't really mean it like that, but you know, um, yeah, you'll 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 be you'll be you'll be stuck basically. So, I would I would really suggest if you're coming to Japan for the first time, that you go for the rural positions first because in general apartments are cheaper uh and this varies by company but your rent rented car sometimes it sometimes they'll do a lease uh but that's really expensive um but if it's like a rental car then you might get you might just have to pay like a minimum like i don't know like 100 bucks a month or something like that 20 200 bucks a month compared to a 400 bucks a month lease uh kind of deal so a lot of things, a lot of things to expect. Um, but uh, another thing, well, aside from like the companies or whatever, is just uh, expect to, depending on how kind of foreigner you are. I mean, if you look at me, I'm uh, Asian 
and uh, I can kind of blend in. So many people don't suspect me to be a foreigner, uh, but I've I've heard horror stories of uh, people being heavily discriminated against just because they were foreigners. Uh, and this, you know, this happens in any country, really. It's really kind of a sad thing, but it happens. And, you know, you'll need to kind of just suck it up. Don't don't start anything. Just learn to walk away, really. Um, because, you know, like any country you go to, there will be some very thick-skulled people. And, you know, the best thing you can do is just, just walk away. Uh, if you're a female and you go into the city, be very, very careful of the salary men. Uh, I have a friend who came to Japan, and she's a fairly young girl. She's like 23, um, but she's had a lot of bad experiences of sexual harassment uh, and just vulgarity from uh, a lot of, I don't know, the salarymen here. Now, basically, salarymen is like people who are in suits that uh, like work an office job, basically. And they are everywhere in Japan. If you look at like a small video of like Tokyo, you'll see them everywhere, really. Um, so, uh, if you're female and uh, you're attractive, and you don't want to be kind of harassed by a lot of people, I would suggest going for a rural position to get your bearings on Japanese culture, and then transition eventually to the to the urban urban position. So. <laughs> yeah, it, you know, it's it's kind of a weird thing for me to say, I guess, but uh, I, I'm just kind of drawing from a lot of the things that I've seen and a lot of the things that my friends have experienced here in Japan. So with that said, that's just a reality that you're going to face here. Um, and if you're, if you're, for example, like a big, like a big white guy, uh, I had a friend who was stopped while he was jogging. By the police, uh, and he was kind of harassed. Uh, like they were asking him, like where he was from, what he was doing here. He's lived here. He's married, uh, and he's up, he's married to a Japanese woman, and they have a kid. You know, he's been in that city for a long time, but um, it's just something that you'll you know that you'll inevitably encounter as a foreigner. And you know, close-minded people, like I said, they're everywhere, and you know, you just, you just have to just kind of just. Just nod and just let it let it go. <laughs> just let it go. For me, I I've experienced some things, but uh, I'll get into that maybe at a different time. So um, yeah, but like aside from that, you know, expect also to just meet very good people. Uh, a lot of for me, like I live in the rural position right now, and a lot of the teachers that I that I'm very close with, uh, who are actually my neighbors, um, you know, they're just. They're great people. Um, if you need anything, they'll they'll generally be very helpful and uh, will just come and you know help. <laughs> uh, so you know, living in Japan has its ups and downs. Um, but and depending on where you live, really, like the the, the standards of living. Uh, for example, my current apartment is dirt cheap because it's with the it's owned by the the village that I that I stay with. So um, my my allowances for being able to spend money or whatever has actually improved drastically over previous jobs. Um, so, you know, it's these things that you'll need to consider, like how much your rent is, how much your lease car is or whatever, how much your train transportations are, um, and just factor them eventually. So in your first two months here, I really suggest that you play kind of like a very reserved uh, you play very reserved, reservedly, hmm? <laughs> reserved, and you just hold back on spending. Uh, get what you need, and watch your expenses after you get your first paycheck. Because after you get that first paycheck, and maybe even the second one, you'll realize what your what your main costs will be, like what your gas will be, etc. Like your your water, electricity, your rent. Um, rent can be a very very painful thing for many people especially if you're in the city. So something to really watch out for. Um, but I think for now, I've answered the four basic things that I wanted to cover. So, um, oh, one last thing. If you are trying to land a job here, I suggest that the job that the company, when they're hiring, they pay a minimum 
250,000 yen, which is approximately 2,500. Um, just because the cost of living here, on average, if you have that much, then you should be okay. If you get like 230, then you're really gonna need to like get a different job uh, eventually or get a part-time job aside from that, which is kind of a pain. So um, 250,000 yen, that should be your main goal for your first, first job. Uh, if they go lower, then I would look elsewhere. But if you if you have no choice, then take it and just find a different job eventually. So, with that said, I think I've covered all of the points that I wanted to cover in this video. If you if you guys have any questions, uh, make a comment, and I will make a follow up video um, of like answering the questions. I will also make uh, different videos uh, explaining in more detail what I wanted to say. Uh, in this video or maybe just other topics that I haven't quite covered that I should cover uh, for living here in Japan so this is basically my first video for this channel and I hope it was informative and I hope my I, I talk very fast so I hope you can understand what I say I was saying and um, yeah so if you do end up in Japan and you do end up in kind of like my area then feel free to hit me up and I will I can drive out. I can drive out to to you and meet you and uh, whatever. So anyway, I will see you guys next time. Peace out.